high-buttoned shoes and peg-top pants. They used to sit on her front porch by the hour and beg her for a kiss. Well, a good many years have passed since then, but here's that same lad now with a merry gleam in his eye as he says, Oh, come on, kiddo. Give me just one little bitty. No, McGee. Not even a taste. <laughs> this cake is for the ladies' club. <laughs> For further details, come on in the kitchen with Fibber McGee and Molly. So I promised Mrs. Bradley I'd bake this cake for the meeting, dearie. Uh-huh. Hand me the Reynolds the wrap there, will you? Here you are. Well, my gosh, Molly, wasting that cake on them women as well. Gee whiz, that's cruelty to animals, you know it. Animals? Sure, you're treating me like a dog. <laughs> like devil's food cake, don't you, sweetheart? Yeah. If I do, if you make it. There was only one time in my life I ever turned down your cake, and that was the night I was playing poker. I don't remember that. I needed a two of hearts or a two of clubs to win with, and I knew I couldn't get them if I ate that devil's food. Why not? Oh, my gosh, you've heard the old saying, you can't eat your cake and have it, too. (laughs) 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 Don't you get it, Molly? That's a very subtle boss. Based on the similarity in sound between... It ain't the... funny, McGee. Well, the side of that cake throws my timing off. <laughs> what time are you going to the club meeting? Because I'll drive I'm not going, dearie. What? But if you'll deliver this cake for me, I'll bake you one like it for dinner tonight. Well, that's the deal. But how come you're not going? I thought you was going... Because on... that Mrs. Jerkin will be there, and I told Mrs. Bradley I would not be in the same house with that woman. You and Mrs. Durkin have a beef? Yes. Hmm. At the last meeting. Oh? We were discussing those boys who run wild in those hot rod autos, and I said they should all be incarcerated. So? So Mrs. Durkin said, uh, what do you mean by incarcerated? Uh-huh. Shut up, I said. Oh? Shut up yourself, she said. Oh? <laughs> Lost off your head, I said. <laughs> and we haven't spoken since. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a jolly little group. <laughs> I had a look at that bunch of biddies when they met over here, and oh, brother. I never saw a collection of crows that could call louder about less in my whole life. Now, that isn't quite fair, McGee. The mm-hmm. girls discuss a lot of useful things at these meetings, mm-hmm. like how to fix up your home. Mm-hmm. Now, today, for instance, the... Uh, Mrs. Bradley is going to show them how to cover a chair. Oh, well, she's the baby that can do it. (laughs) And she sits down, she covers two chairs. And hangs over the sides a little bit. (laughs) Look, dearie, I've got this cake in a box for you, and please be careful with it, will you? Mm Mm-hmm. Hand it to Mrs. Bradley personally, huh? Careful. My gosh, kiddo, when you send me on an errand, you know perfectly well it'll be handled perfectly well, don't you? I hope so. You betcha. You didn't do so well at the bond con yesterday, though, did you? Well, that was a kind of a... I told you what I wanted and even tied a piece of white thread around your finger so you wouldn't forget. Mm. But you did. You know, I still can't understand that. I got to that bond con and looked at that white thread on my finger and my mind just went blank. You remember now what I wanted? Sure, white thread. <laughs> but don't you worry today. I'll deliver this cake to Mrs. Spradley and I've got to run a couple of errands of my own and then I'll be... Oh, somebody's at the back door, dearie. Come oh. in. Oh, good morning, Mr. Wimple. Oh, hi, Wimple. Hello, folks. <laughs> I was just cutting through the alley, and I thought I'd drop in. Well, pull up a chair, Wimp. What's new, boy, besides that lump over your eye? Oh, my goodness. How'd you ever get that bump, Mr. Yeah. Wimple? Oh, it was sort of an accident, Mrs. Mm-hmm. McGee. Just a slip of the tongue, really. Mm-hmm. You said something you shouldn't have? Yes. Yeah. Sweetie Face and I were out at her uncle's farm yesterday, mm-hmm. and her uncle asked me if we had any war bonds. War bonds? Yes. I said, just one, I marriage license. <laughs> Sweetie Face was moving a wagon at the time. And I quick said, it was just a slip of the tongue, dear. And she said, so is this, and she let go of the wagon tongue. <laughs> Have you ever been slugged with a hay frame, Mr. McGee? 
No, just on the privilege, I guess. <laughs> now, look, Wim, I got to take a cake over to old lady Spadley for Molly. You want to come along for the ride? Oh, I'd love to go, Mr. McGee. What time does the cake have to be there, Molly? No special rush, dearie. Any time in the next couple of hours. Good. Okay, Wimp and I better get going. I got a letter to mail, and I'll run it out to the airport, and then we'll drop off the cake. You seen my hat? No, not this morning, Evans. Oh, I know where it is. I put that in the hall closet. No, McGee, don't open that hall closet. Please. <laughs> Well, grab the cake, Wimp. Let's go. Take a look and see how that cake's riding back there, will you, Wimp? Won't fall off that back seat, will it? No, it's riding fine, Mr. McGee. Good. Hey, could we stop at Kramer's Drug Store for a minute? They're nearly there. Sure. What do you want to get in Kramer's? A roll of films I had developed. Oh? Some pictures I took last week of my closest friends. Yeah? Who are they? Well, mostly. Been busy with your bird watching again, have you? Yes. I've been very fortunate lately. Oh? Just yesterday, I spied the first speckled question bird of the season. The first what? The speckled question bird. Oh? He's called that because his cry sounds like he's asking a question. Well, this little fellow was just back from spending the winter in the south. <laughs> How could you tell that? Oh, that's easy. Uh-huh. The speckled question bird usually says, Zetsu! 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 But when he's just returned from the south, he says, So no? So no? Now, well, fortunately, here's the drugstore, Wimp. Run and get your pictures. I'll wait here with the cake. Thank you. I'll cut you back as fast as I can. Okay, boy. He sure likes his birds. Been watching him so much, he's starting to walk like one. A duck. Oh, he's done. Hi, Phil. Oh, hi, Mae. Where's Mom? Home. Cleaning? Cooking. Lunch? Brunch. Oh. Where's Mart? Market. Shopping? Clerking. Working. Shirking. Oh. Bye, Phil. Bye, Mae. <laughs> Mabel Toots. She must save up on conversation all day until she runs into somebody she knows. Oh, hey, Oli. Oh, hi, Oli. Well, hello, McGee. What you doing down there? Oh, I'm waiting for Wimp. Well, what's new at your house, boy? Anything? Well, the only thing is new is our daughter Christina gets married pretty soon. Oh, fine. Her and her fella been looking for a place to live that don't cost too much. Hmm? Any luck? Well, yes. They decide to take a nice large room with two closets, cooking privileges, steam heat, one block from the boss line, and fresh women twice a week. Hmm. This is all right. What's it going to cost them? Not one red cent. It's our spare bedroom. Oh. <laughs> I see. The missus hoped Christina would still be near us, but that near us used to be ridiculous. <laughs> Can't the guy she's going to marry afford a place of his own? Not until he finds a job that suits him. What's he do? He's a waiter. Or works in restaurants. No, he used to wait for a job that suits him. Oh. <laughs> Hard to please, eh? Well, ordinary jobs in Jibnor for him because he went to college and he got an A.B. Mm -hmm. That stands for Artistic Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, yes, I know. But pretty soon he won't be a bachelor and then the A.B. will stood for always broke. <laughs> well, you got my sympathy, Ollie. Oh, well, all the news ain't bad. My boy Lars, he gets out of the Navy and he comes home now to stay. Oh, that's great. I'll bet he's really doing the town. No, he ain't left the house even once. Hmm, why not? Well, you see, he got used to those tight sailor britches. Mm -hmm. Now when he puts on regular clothes, he feels like his pants is falling down. <laughs> My, that thing sounds exciting, Harlow. Yes, it gave me quite a thrill, Wallace. Oh, hello, pal. Hi, Junior. I met Harlow in the drugstore, and he has a wonderful piece of news. Tell him, Harlow. Big stuff, Junior? Well, I'll uh... I'll say it is. Tell him, Harlow. Yeah, let's hear it. Must be sensational. Well... I'll say it is. Tell him, Harlow. What's the story, Junior? Tell him, Harlow. Pipe down, Wimp. Let him tell me. My goodness, I was only being sensational. <laughs> 
Go ahead, Hilo. What's the deal? <laughs> well, it's really not so much, pal. Mm-hmm. I met a fellow today who uh, wants to take me on a fishing trip in his new boat. Oh, a new boat. Boy, I'd like to have that chance. Well, I must admit, I got quite a kick out of it. I could see myself out on the water, the boat cutting through the waves, its aluminum outboard motor gleaming in the sun. Aluminum motors? Yes, yes. So many modern outboard motors these days are made almost entirely of aluminum. Hmm. Reynolds aluminum. Is that so? Well, when do you go on the boat? The cylinders, cylinder block, pistons, connecting rods, mm-hmm. crankcase, and fuel tank are all aluminum on these motors. Well, when you go on the boat, cuts the weight of an outboard motor in half. And boy, is that important. Sure, sure. But when you go on the boat, more and more boats, too, are all aluminum. Yeah, I know. Reynolds Lifetime Aluminum, mm-hmm. including aluminum boat hulls in one piece. When you go on the boat, that means the boat <laughs> are streamlined in look, streamlined in weight, and streamlined in price. When you go on the boat. Because aluminum costs no more today than it did before the Second World War. Junior, before I start the first McGee Wilcox War, when are you going on the boat? Oh, I'm not going. <laughs> I turned my friend down. You turned him down? Sure. Come to find out, this phony didn't have an aluminum outboard motorboat at all. Just a plain old 200-foot mahogany yacht. Hmm. See you later. You think I'd go with him on that thing? Now, come on, Wimp. Get in. Let's run out to the airport and mail my letter before we all turn to aluminum. before I forget it. Oh, it's so exciting. Sure is. People going places and coming back. And those people going and the people that went coming back. <laughs> and the people that came back going. And Dr. Gamble coming this way. Huh? Oh, my gosh, it's Doc Gamble. Hi, right, that's all. Well, greetings, bullpuss. <laughs> Where are you going? I hope. <laughs> just out here to mail a letter, Doctor. I just shot it down the chute. I'm out here, William, Doctor. Oh, hello, Wallace. Hey, it must be a pretty important letter if it took two of you to see it off. Yes, it was, Doctor. It, uh, it what was it, Miss Lee? My gas bill. <laughs> a little late with it, and that's why your you're... gas bill? The 14th and Oak? Where else? I'm overdue with it, and I thought I'd better hurry it up, so I airmailed it. How do you expect that to hasten it? Well, don't ask me. All I know is if you want a letter to get there fast, you airmail it. Right, Wallace? Oh, yes, Doctor. Oh, I see. Uh, fellas, does Molly know you two are running around loose without anybody looking after you? Because, wait a minute, she knows where we are, George. I got a cake in the back of the car there, and I'm delivering it to old lady Stradley for her as soon as I leave here. Well, I'd better be leaving, too. Yeah? I'm on my way over to Ken Darby's house to treat him for falling hair. Oh, he's got that. Huh? Gotta pick up some splints and bandages at the drugstore. Splints first. and bandages? Yeah. For falling hair? Yes, his wife found the blonde hair that fell on his shoulder. <laughs> Come on, Wimp. Let's deliver this cake and get home. All right. Well, isn't Dr. Gamble nice? Ah. He's a great guy. You happen to like a guy that weighs around a ton with his pockets full of pills and smells like a prescription counter? Personally, I do. Hey, Mr. McGee, I think this man wants... Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, are you going into town? Town? Oh, I am, uh, bud. cabs are all filled up. I wonder if I... Oh, uh... sure, bud. Climb in the back seat there. Thanks. Just make yourself comfortable there. Where do you want to be dropped off? Oh, any place around the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. I'm taking this package to a friend who's near there. Oh, yeah. Well, we go right by it. Just step back and make yourself comfortable. Thanks. Most guys that pick up another guy expect him to do his whole life history, but not me. I I just give him a list. Good. You from around these parts? No. Further west? No. Further east? Yes. Mm. Massachusetts? No. New York? New Jersey? No. Pennsylvania? Delaware? 
Marilyn? <laughs> no. What'd you do? <laughs> no. No, oh, well, don't matter. Just make yourself comfortable. Go so out. You know, brother, there's something familiar about your face, like you might be related to somebody I know. Your name happened to be Callahan? No. Smith? Jones? No. Johnson? Williams? Thompson? No. Bosley Rathbone? <laughs> no. No, oh, don't matter. Just relax. Thanks. Nice car you got. What year is it? 1940. No, it's Yeah. That's the way it is with hitchhikers, Luther. Give them a lift and they want to know your whole life history. Old Lady Spradley's house is along here someplace, Wimp. I hope you watch for it, Mr. McGee. Good. Hey, that was the kind of a nice guy we brought in from the airport, wasn't he? Oh, yes. Quite pleasant. Mm-hmm. What do you say his name was? Come to think of it, I, I don't believe he's sad. Looks like a guy with money, though. I can always tell good breeding, and he looks like a very well-breeded guy on account of his Oh, here's the house. Here's the house. Ah, gotta get them brakes fixed. Reach back there and get the cake for me, Wimp. boy. Now, this won't take long because I wouldn't go inside that house for all the teas and tootie tooties. I don't blame you. When old lady Spradley opens the front door on that gab fest, it'll sound like pulling the stopper out of a bottle of bee. <laughs> I'll wait here. Let me. I still think Molly should have kept this cake and sent this bunch of crows a few years of corn. Oh, oh, there you are, Mr. McGee. Do come in. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> Uh, hi, Mrs. Spradley. I can't come in. I, I just come to bring this... Cake that your wife yeah. sent. Oh, she makes such wonderful cake. Yeah, much too good. <laughs> well, I do wish she could have come to the meeting. It's been just a wonderful meeting, Mr. McGee. Oh. So stimulating. Oh, somebody spiked the punch. <laughs> Uncle Dennis used to get pretty stimulated himself. Mentally stimulating, Mr. Oh, McGee. We've been studying European politics. Oh? Our topic today has been West Germany whither. <laughs> whither, huh? Yes. Oh. Such a fascinating subject. Whither. You know, of course, about Adenauer. Adenauer? Yes. Oh, sure. You do that next week when daylight savings starts. <laughs> Not this week. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm huh? speaking of Chancellor Adenauer, Mr. McGee. West Germany. Oh, 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 yeah, sure, the chance, yeah. I read about the chance. <laughs> I do feel that these days, when so many women are going into politics, we girls should know about foreign affairs. Uh-huh. How do you feel about foreign affairs, Mr. McGee? Foreign affairs? Yes. Well, they're all right for foreigners, but... Uh... <laughs> I don't think a married man has got any business in... (laughs) Really, Mr. McGee, I'm afraid I'm talking a bit over your head. Oh, well, here, I'll come up on the top step. (laughs) Now we're about even, so if you'll... As I was saying to the girls, before we can run politics, we must know politics. Ah, yes. I feel that before we women can take any bows, we must first provide ourselves with a good, firm foundation. Yeah, well, certainly. Can't take a low bow if you're scared something's going to split. And... <laughs> Mrs. Spradley, if you think I'm going to stand out here and discuss such a subject by any three-way stretch of the imagination, all i got to say is good day. <laughs> again with you I will jitterbug with you <laughs> Hey, Molly Molly, I'm home Hello, dearie, everything all right? Well, Nat, me and Wimp run a couple of errands and then delivered your cake to Mrs. Spadley right on time Good Evening paper come yet? Oh, here it is Yeah, that cake probably was the hit of the party, you know Mrs. Spradley called me to say it did cause quite a sensation <laughs> Well, it should have, you make the greatest Hey, oh my gosh, Molly. What is it? Did you see this story in the paper? This picture? 
This public enemy they caught today? Bullets Brown? Oh, I saw the picture. I didn't read what Holy it smoke. Me and Wimple. We picked this guy up this afternoon. What? Oh, my. You actually... Yeah, we drove him in from the airport. I dropped him off at the city hall corner. Wow, a public enemy. Heavenly day. Says Brown was nabbed on his way to visit his pal, Machine Gun McGraw, <laughs> who was in city jail. Oh, dear. You might have been killed. Or arrested. <laughs> Says Brown was carrying a cake to deliver to his accomplice. Cake? Yeah, I remember now. He had a box in his hand. Says police, suspecting concealed weapons, opened the cake, tore it apart, but found nothing. Brown was released, but the police ate the cake. <laughs> Huh? Mrs. Bradley said the cake you delivered looked lovely. Yeah. Said everybody was talking about it, sure. but why did I bake a file and six hacksaw blades in it? <laughs> well, why did you, Molly? That's a silly thing. When I think of those policemen tearing into my beautiful cake, I've got a good notion to go down there and... Ladies and gentlemen, let me read you some shocking statistics. Every day, 600 Americans die of cancer. 225,000 Americans will die of cancer this year. At the present rate, one out of every five Americans will develop cancer. Think of that. But it can be cured if it is caught and treated in time. About 70,000 of our people were saved from cancer last year. The American Cancer Society is leading the fight against this terrible disease, and it can only be won with our money. Send your donation to cancer in care of your local post office.